There are essentially two reasons to tow an aircraft. To move the aircraft from the ramp to a taxiway or taxi lane in preparation for flight, and to reposition the aircraft to another area of the airfield, such as another ramp or hangar. In this video, we will first identify general tow operation safety considerations. We'll explore pre-tow tasks, which include identification of potential personal injury and equipment hazards. We will walk through a typical pushback operation and tow operation, examining each step and safety considerations involved in both scenarios. The risks and dangers of the ramp area are significant, even with an aircraft parked with the engine shut down. The possibility of serious personal injury, damage to aircraft and ground vehicles, and jeopardizing the safety of passengers is always present. The majority of the incidents caused by unsafe towing operations involve damage to aircraft. These occur during towing operations, as when the aircraft's wings collide with other obstacles, such as another aircraft or ground vehicle, or when the aircraft is at rest, as when a tug inadvertently collides with the aircraft. Serious and potentially deadly incidents can occur when safe zones are not respected, equipment is not properly inspected, or safe towing practices are not followed. Accidents and incursions can result from numerous factors, but the vast majority are caused by the following. Lack of situational awareness can lead to serious incidents. This includes inattention to your surroundings, not properly watching your wing walkers, not spotting potential obstacles or anticipating situations, improper attention to communications, and the prohibited use of cell phones and personal music devices. Unintentional errors put everyone at risk. This includes skipping safety checks or procedures and cutting corners or hurrying through operations because of pressures from the pilot to push back or because your shift is ending. Complacency can also lead to unintentional errors and lack of situational awareness. Just because your previous tow operations have all gone off without a hitch does not mean a situation will not suddenly arise that will put you, your team, and the aircraft, and everyone on board, in a serious situation. Also, while team chemistry is important, being too comfortable and friendly with your peers that you jeopardize safety is unacceptable. Complacency can be exhibited by a carefree attitude toward your duty, not listening to and completely understanding communications, or anticipating commands or procedures and expecting results based on past experience. And serious incursions can result from a lack of following safety procedures, such as ignoring or misunderstanding communications, or using unsafe towing speeds, both of which may set into motion a chain of events that are unrecoverable. There are many types and manufacturers of tugs serving the commercial and general aviation industry. We'll concentrate on heavy-duty tow bar and tow barless tow vehicles, also called TLTVs or super tugs used in commercial aviation. A tow bar tug utilizes a bar connecting the tractor to the aircraft for towing operations. A TLTV secures lifts, and cradles the aircraft's nose gear, mechanically locking it to the TLTV. Each tug manufacturer may have operating procedures specific to their models. You need to be trained and certified on the model or models your employer uses before operating. There are a number of tasks, concepts, and practices you need to know before commencing any tug operation. The tow operation team consists of the tow vehicle operator, wing walkers, and in some cases, a tail walker. The tow vehicle operator is the team leader and receives communications from the cockpit observer, usually the pilot. He will monitor all communication between air traffic control, ramp control, if applicable, and the flight deck. The tow vehicle operator is responsible for executing the commands he receives from air traffic control 
as well as obeying emergency stop instructions from any team member. The tow vehicle operator will remain at the tug controls at all times during aircraft movement and will immediately stop if communications are lost with the cockpit observer, air traffic control, or ramp control. The tow vehicle operator should also be extremely knowledgeable of the airport's layout and of any special areas such as construction activity or military areas. A copy of the most recent airport diagram should be kept in the tug at all times. A tug driver should have gone through an appropriate training and certification program tailored to the specific airport and tug model. Only tug drivers who are authorized and certified are allowed to operate the tug. The tow vehicle operator is also responsible for maintaining visual contact with his wing walkers. A wing walker is a team member who's positioned at the wingtip and walks with the aircraft as it's being pushed back to ensure there's adequate clearance for the aircraft to proceed. There should be two wing walkers, one stationed at each wing tip. The wing walker is responsible for properly signaling the tow vehicle operator as soon as it appears the aircraft is in danger of colliding with an obstruction, such as another aircraft or ground vehicle. If a wing walker signals you to stop, stop immediately and personally check the clearance. During nighttime operations, applicable tow team members will be issued luminous wands. A tail walker should be used during tow operations when the aircraft is to be turned sharply or backed into a specific position or hangar. The tug operator should make a thorough inspection of the tug at the beginning of his shift and prior to tow operation to ensure that all towing equipment is working properly, including checking brakes, oil and fuel levels, tire pressure, lights, horn, and hitch. This also includes testing the headset and the interphone to make sure communications work properly. All towing connections, including the tow bar, should be inspected before each use. Make sure the tow bar is the correct bar for the aircraft being moved. There are different tow bars used for specific aircraft types. An inspection checklist should be used to ensure a complete and accurate inspection. Also look for permanent or temporary restriction placards located inside the tug cab indicating if there are any restrictions that apply to the tow vehicle, such as the type of aircraft that may be towed. If any mechanical defects are found on any tow equipment that will affect safety, the equipment is taken out of service until repaired. Only authorized equipment in good condition will be used in towing operations. There are numerous hazards in the ramp area associated with the aircraft. Always wait until the aircraft's engines have been shut down before beginning any tow connection or movement around the aircraft. There are ingestion zones painted in the ramp area, and they are there for good reason. If you must move around the aircraft while turbine engines are at idle, respect these zones. Even at idle, FOD, or foreign object debris, and personnel can be sucked into the engines. The blast zone is the area directly behind and to the side of a turbine engine. The high velocity and heat generated by the engine's exhaust are extremely dangerous. For propeller-driven engines, the safety zones are equally important. A propeller is roughly two and a half times larger than the engine diameter, creating a larger danger zone. Rotating propellers are virtually invisible to the human eye. Unfortunately, Far too many seasoned personnel have inadvertently walked into running propellers. Remember that while the aircraft's engines are operating, the aircraft's hydraulic system is active. The potential for injury and damage from suddenly moving flaps or rudders is always present while the engines are on. For example, if the pilot inadvertently slips and activates the rudder while the tow bar is being connected with the engines running, the bar could swing wildly, causing personal injury and damage to the aircraft and tug. Flashing red beacon lights are located on the top and bottom of the aircraft's fuselage to alert you that engines are running. They're turned on when an engine is on or about to be turned on, and they're turned off when the last engine is shut down. Other hazards include fire hazards from fuel leaks, contamination and potential chemical burns from various aircraft fluids, and health hazards from laboratory leaks. High voltage is present in auxiliary power units, or APUs, which are used to power the aircraft during servicing. 
Static electricity that is built up on the wings and airframe is also a potentially serious hazard. Some parts of the aircraft will have become very hot, especially the brakes and wheels of an incoming aircraft. Particular caution needs to be exercised to avoid serious burns. Under no circumstances should any extraneous objects, such as baggage, chocks, or even extra riders be placed on the tow vehicle during operations. Serious incidents have occurred from baggage falling onto a tug's accelerator pedal during tow operations, and a falling chalk can easily break a foot. Regarding riders, a good rule to remember is that the number of seats on a tug determines the authorized number of personnel allowed to ride. Towing speed is a major consideration affecting the tug's handling characteristics and braking distance. Pushback towing speed should not exceed that of the walking team members, generally about three to five miles per hour. All tug and aircraft combinations will have maximum allowable safe speeds, as determined by the aircraft's weight and the tug's power rating. Weather conditions will also determine safe towing speeds. TLTV operators will have published top speeds for various aircraft and conditions, and they should not be exceeded. Heavier aircraft will greatly affect momentum and braking distance. A tow operation that is moving too fast can have disastrous consequences if the braking distance exceeds safety limits. Sudden braking in a fast-moving TLTV towing a heavy aircraft has caused violent oscillations in the TLTV movement, which has led to severe personal injury. There is also a pivot limit on tugs, the maximum angle of turn radius allowable to prevent damage and maintain safe handling. You should be aware of these limits, which vary between types of tugs and aircraft. Now let's examine a typical pushback operation utilizing a tug with tow bar. When connecting the tow vehicle to the aircraft, the tow bar will first be connected to the aircraft using the appropriate tow bar and procedure for that model aircraft, and then the tow bar will be connected to the tug. However, before connecting the tow bar, make sure the nose gear steering pin is installed and, if applicable, the landing gear pins. After the tow vehicle is connected to the aircraft, a second operations team member should verify the attachment is secure. It is always a good policy to have a second set of eyes double-check all procedures. Establish communications between the flight deck and the tug by plugging into the aircraft's communications panel. This is a critical step. Verify communications are clear and reliable. In preparation for pushback, after the aircraft has been serviced, perform a complete walk around to ensure that all equipment is clear of the outer safety perimeter. All FOD has been removed from the ramp area and the aircraft is ready to go. Hold a safety briefing with your wing walkers and any other appropriate personnel to plan the operation, where the aircraft will travel, what obstacles might be encountered, and each person's responsibilities during pushback. When the aircraft is ready for pushback, the pilot will alert air traffic control. Air traffic control will acknowledge. So it's 234 Rio Ground, pushback, your discretion, advise ready to taxi. Before personnel can remove the chocks, verify that the pilot has set the aircraft's brakes. Then remove the chocks and make sure they're clear of the safety perimeter. Communicate with the pilot to coordinate the pushback. Before beginning the tow, make sure your wing walkers are in place and attentive. Make visual contact with each one and indicate that the team is ready to go. Always maintain a high level of situational awareness. Do not become complacent. Look towards the area into which you'll be moving the aircraft. Check for other aircraft and potential obstacles, even those in the far distance that could be affected by jet blast when the engines are started. Check vehicle roadways for ground traffic. Ground vehicles are required to yield to aircraft, but do not anticipate that they will see you or won't try to hurry around you. Pushback speed should not exceed the normal walking speed of the wing walkers, roughly three to five miles per hour. Wing walkers should always walk forward, not backward, and always be watching for obstacles and fog. They should also remain in your line of sight at all times. As the tug driver, you should constantly be scanning your eyes between the wing walkers, your surroundings, 
and the area into which you are moving. If a wing walker indicates an obstacle, stop immediately. Many, if not most, ramp area collisions are due to the inattention, lack of concentration, or a low level of situational awareness by a tow operations team member. Under no circumstances should there be any extra passengers on the tug beyond its passenger limit rating. No personnel should ride on the outside of the tug or aircraft or ride on the tow bar. And no one should walk between the nose wheel of the aircraft and the tug during tow operations. Do not brake hard when coming to a stop, as this could damage the aircraft and tug, compromise maneuverability and control, and startle passengers and crew. When you have correctly positioned the aircraft, execute the proper disconnect procedure once the pilot has acknowledged he has set the aircraft's brakes, first disconnecting the tow bar from the tug, then from the aircraft. Also remove communications, gear pins, and steering bypass pin. Perform a second walk around to ensure the aircraft is ready. It is also advisable to have a second operations member verify that all is clear. Advise the pilot that the aircraft is secure from tow operations and return all equipment to the ramp area. The pushback operation is now complete. A typical tow procedure may involve moving an aircraft to another area of the airfield for example, to a maintenance hangar. In this situation, the aircraft may be moved using active taxiways and across active runways. Many of the concepts and procedures are applicable to the tow operation, no matter which model tug is used, tow bar or TLTV. However, there are some significant differences in operational procedures and handling characteristics between them. In this example, we'll illustrate the use of a TLTV. A typical tow operations team will consist of the following. A tug operator, who also acts as the team leader. A cockpit rider, who maintains communications with air traffic control, operates the aircraft's lights, and is available to apply the aircraft's brakes only in an emergency. Wing walkers and tail walker to ensure a clear path of movement in congested areas or into and out of hangars. All members should be intimately familiar with the airport's layout. Current airport diagram should be present in the tug and cockpit. Be aware that surface markings and signs may be difficult to see due to weather or atmospheric conditions. A high level of situational awareness is to be maintained and is the responsibility of every team member. Complacency or rushed operations can have devastating consequences. For the TLTV operator, communications with air traffic control will most likely be direct if there is no communications radio in the tug, or if the radio becomes inoperable, communications will run through the cockpit rider. Maintain a sterile flight deck and TLTV cab. No unnecessary conversation or communications. And the use of cell phones and personal music devices is strictly prohibited. Speed and handling characteristics are major differences between tow bar tugs and TLTVs. Because of the increased weight and size of the aircraft typically towed, and the size, weight, and power of a TLTV, acceleration is slower, turning radius is wider, tow speed is potentially faster, but braking distance is much longer. These factors may compromise the ability to comply with an air traffic control command to expedite, or amended clearances to stop, pull short, or make a quick turn. It is imperative that if a tug driver cannot safely comply with an air traffic control command, he should respond with unable. When towing an aircraft with a TLTV, it is critical that towing speed does not exceed the safe operating